Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean video today. Today you're going to go out to a thing that's gone today, see if things are on sale. I know the big release today, you know, was Transformers The Last Night, and I know there's like a number of different, you know, retail exclusive editions of that one. So definitely going to go around and check out those editions of that one, as well as I'm going to have a review of that movie at the end of this video, as well as some other DVD and Blu-rays that I received to review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. Also this Saturday I'm going to have my new uh, DVD Blu-ray update video be up Saturday morning. I'll be reviewing one thing in there. I really look forward to talking to you guys about it. I just got it today. Can't wait to watch it. The, you know, the latest Chucky film, Cult of Chucky. So definitely be on the lookout for that. That'll be, like a, like I said, uh, Saturday morning. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And it looks like it's going to be one of those Tuesdays when I have to go to another Target because it's about like 1230 and like nothing in here has been changed at at all. It's sort of like it's not a new Tuesday or anything. It's all the same stuff from last week, you know, the Wonder Woman and stuff. So nothing new at all has been changed in here. Nothing over here in the kids section or anything. So definitely going to have to head to a Target number two now. It always is weird when that happens though, because like, you know, they I think they open at like 9 or 10 or something. So like, like, it was just so strange, you know, when you go in there and absolutely not one thing is put out at all. But I'll go to a different Target though and see if, you know, they put out the stuff. But they definitely didn't seem to be any hurry to put anything out. Because I, I know there was, uh, besides um, Transformers, I know 47 meters down came out. So I know there ha was, was some other things as well. And I feel like they probably would have had a stand for the Transformers movie as well, but I'm not sure. Well, into the second Target we go, and this one's doing some kind of massive like remodel and stuff, so who knows if it's gonna look weird inside or chains around, but there's all kinds of stuff going on in the front. But into Target we go, and fingers crossed that this one put the stuff out yet, but who knows? Well, you can tell though, this must be like a, one of the new kind of looks Target's going for, because it's got a real different look going on so far, like the clothes and like a, fancy looking dressing room thing going on back there so guess like all the targets little by little are going to kind of start to update and change the look so i guess that you know targets are not going to look like they did in career opportunities anymore because i feel like targets one of those stores that kind of got their look in like 1990 and then kind of like stuck with it so i guess now targets finally you know not going to be career opportunities look anymore and yeah this one you know did put out the stuff and they did have a standee i thought they would have some kind of a standee up for transformers their edition here has you know only at target exclusive bonus discs what this has over 50 minutes of exclusive content on that so that's 1999 so if you guys want you know more feature wise i'm not sure what the features are on it but that's that's quite a bit 50 minutes a lot of times too when they have bonus stuff nowadays they do you know digitally so at least this one actually has a disc in here and then other than that though I don't think there's any other exclusive editions their their exclusive edition 2 has a um, different cover on it their cover is um, yeah that's this is the disc cover on theirs and the standard edition you know blu-ray is the, the this cover so they actually have exclusive cover and the 50 minutes extra on this one other than that though over here in the section though they have you know 47 meters down here for 1999 but that looks like the majority of the main new things in here today doesn't really seem like too much else in here that i can see into the valley thrift store we go so we'll take a look and see if there's anything in here different today looks like I, you know there's some newer things haven't been in here in I don't know maybe it's been a month or so it's been a little while and I, sometimes I come in here and really find some decent stuff and other times it's like really really common stuff yeah you know that I'm always seeing it's not as stocked up in here as it's been some of the last times though because I mean, there is a little bit on the bottom but there's been times in the past so the whole area is full up the stuff but we'll look through here and see if there's anything different there are a couple like weirder things like but nothing you know that out of the ordinary i don't know what this one is it's angie everhart daniel bardman movie bear witness a really weird stretched out cover on the back of this i don't not know and you always see freeway one but never two but you know i ended up getting that one a couple months back online but of course with the copy though the disc itself had a little teeny crack in it here's some weird thing the mother goose treasure volume one i don't know what this thing is some kind of a weird from year 2000 some kind of weird like knock off of like we sing or something 
something like that. I don't know. Very strange looking. And this is kind of a strange thing. I hear this TV show called Life Season 1. And at first I thought it was like, oh, it's some like Seth Green show. Because so it really looks like Seth Green in the front. But like, no, this is like a, like a weird, and on the back he doesn't look like him. But he's sort of a strange clone of Seth Green. At least in this, you know, cover on the front. It looks like a Seth Green show. I'm like, what, what was this with him? This is a weird thing to see in here. This beneath the crust. This is one of those things they had like, I think it was like a Walmart exclusive years ago with the first American Pie movie, I believe. It was like, you know, sort of exclusive features on this. I don't know if these features were ever, you know, released on any of the Blu-rays or were only ever on this, you know, this set thing like that. But I always remember this one when that first came out. And I ended up actually finding one thing in there. And it's like, the price is all over the place of what it goes for. It's like $20 and some people are charging like $30. As far as I can tell, it's an out of print one. And it's when a stranger calls back. It's like the sequel to When a Stranger Calls with Kara Kane, and she came back for this one. Somehow I've never seen this movie. I know I've come across this cover, or at least I remember seeing this. It's probably not a, gr a great release though, because it's like a Good Times release from 2001, and all the Good Times, you know, um, prints and stuff were always sort of taken from like VHS's and stuff and, you know usually they were like kind of weird as far as I remember but still was like a different one that I really haven't recalled seeing in quite a while into Walmart we go and in here though they have some exclusive editions here only at Walmart ones the 4k one is $25.96 and it has another one of those sort of 360 viewer things that you put over like your phone or something like that it's kind of weird they've been doing this lately here these 360 viewer things have been like like, seems something like they've been doing with the 4Ks at Walmart. They also have this, you know, exclusive edition here that comes with the um, Bumblebee and Optimus Prime uh, die-cast cars. And that one is $24.96 for that edition. That one, you know, is only the, uh, you know, the Blu-ray edition for that. They also have in here the uh, this uh, five-movie collection here, which has all five of the films together for $39.96. Other than that, though, over here, uh, this one came out today, you know, 47 Meters Down, which I reviewed this one last week. I really like this movie. I, I always like these kind of shark movies, and this was all set with, you know, Mandy Moore and her, you know, sister, I think it was her sister, all stuck down in the cage at the bottom of the ocean where there were these sharks kind of coming after them, and they have to kind of survive with uh, one tank of air. I don't know. I thought it was actually kind of cool, you know, uh, thriller kind of movie. The other one that released today was this one, uh, Girl in the Box, which I'm going to review with this one at the end of this video but this was actually probably one of the best lifetime movies I've seen in a really long time the Michael Jackson one I'm gonna be talking about that one soon that was actually pretty good as well but this is probably one of my favorite of the lifetime things I've seen in a really long time definitely recommend this one though and in Walmart as well, they have these ones done in the style of Day of the Dead, these, you know, reissues of the horror ones. These are actually pretty cool. Their editions, though, have an exclusive thing that comes with it, which is some kind of like a coloring book. It's like, it's, I don't know where it is in there. I guess it's like inside of it or something. Or on the, I don't know. I guess it's like a real thin, because you can't even see it in here. I don't know. Maybe they're inside of them, I'm guessing. I guess inside because they, they I think they'd have to be but it's an exclusive thing they have and they have the DVD ones for five dollars and then the blu-rays for seven dollars but they have a bunch of different ones like I said these are just like the reissues of the old blu-rays that have been released in the past but you know with these new artwork uh, you know paper things on the front but you can take them out and put them underneath of them to kind of protect them I think most people who are picking these ones up are kind of picking them up just for the artwork and kind of keeping them as is I think the coolest one is probably the Return of the Living Dead one and then the Killer Clowns one are probably my favorite of all these ones but definitely a cool thing like I said I don't know what the you know comic you know the uh, coloring book though is in this I guess like I said it's got to be inside and this past weekend I saw two different films uh, the first one I saw was Friend Request and that was basically um, a lot of people were kind of comparing it to Unfriended, but I actually think it was like filmed before Unfriended or like right around the same time. It was basically about like these these kids at school and they were like, there was this one kind of weird girl who, um, you know, started kind of stalking and obsessing about the one girl there and she kind of was starting to kind of become friends with her and she only had one friend on Facebook, which was her, and they were kind of like um, avoiding her and ignoring her and she ended up, you know, killing herself. And then, like, the one girl who, like, you know, caused it to happen because she ignored her and didn't invite her to this party and stuff. Then she was kind of, they were all kind of getting haunted by her. I thought it was actually kind of cool. There was a couple creepy stuff in it. It was one of those movies that was totally not perfect or anything. And I felt like, you know, they were showing the girl's Facebook, the one that, you know, killed herself. And 
they kind of had some cool stuff on it, like some creepy images and stuff, but then I felt like they could have had a little bit more to it because they were kind of always showing the same, you know, creepy images on the Facebook, and I felt like there should have been a little more to that, and they should have added some of that instead of just having the same ones again and again and again you kept seeing and they kept going back to. But there was a couple creepy deaths to it. It kind of reminded me of, like, Unfriended mixed with, like, The Grudge and The Ring, like that kind of a vibe to it. But it wasn't not, it was really not a bad one. It, it didn't do that great at the box office and actually I think has been released in like other countries for quite a while now. The other one that I saw was, you know, the new Ben Stiller movie, Brad Status. And that one is definitely another one that's going to go on my list of favorite movies this year so far, you know, next to Good Time. That movie was actually really good, and I, I like Ben Stiller when he does like a different kind of character. In this one, he was kind of playing a really kind of cynical, depressed, unhappy guy about his life, and you know he's going around looking at colleges with his son, and he, the whole movie is kind of him, you know, having these like. Um, dreams and uh, daydreams and thoughts and stuff. It's like him thinking about his life and how he feels like he's such an, a failure and how all these other friends of his that he went to college with are doing these big things and he's always in his mind imagining like what they're doing and what they're doing with their family and flying jets and he's thinking, oh, well, my life and I should have done this and I don't have the money that I think I should have and, you know, it's looking like his son is going to go to a really good school and he's kind of like almost trying to self-destruct things with his son because he's you know doesn't want his son to be a big success and him not and then at times he wants him to be but then he's like well I don't want to live in the shadow of my son it's 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 a very like downbeat very sad uh, you know, character piece with him and his son but really loved it you know it's written by Mike White you know who um, did Year of the Dog and then, you know, wrote and starred in one of my favorite, like, lesser known, you know, don't hear about movies very often, a movie called uh, Chuck and Buck. Really great indie movie. And, like, I love, too, with that movie, like, a lot of the actors in it were actually people who didn't really use, usually act at all. They were, like, directors, like the guys that did the first American Pie and stuff. But, like, let me know below, you know, what movies you saw this past weekend. The one big one that came out, you know, this weekend was, you know, the latest Kingsman movie. And I liked the first Kingsman movie, but for some reason... I wasn't that excited about watching this one. I don't know why. I didn't feel like the trailers looked that amazing. I'm sure I'm going to see it at some point. Just like for some reason, wasn't like super excited to see this one though. Like I said though, let me know below, you know, what you guys saw this weekend, you know, this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go. And in here for the Transformers though, they have this only at Best Buy collectible steelbook here for $21.99. And they have a 4K steelbook as well. So if you guys want the movie on 4K, they have an exclusive steelbook of that one. That one's $28.99 for the steelbook. They also have in here this exclusive one in a steelbook as well with all five of the movies together. And that one's, you know, $39.99. But that one, you know, only is the Blu-ray copies, not, you know, the 4K of the new one. And in here, though, they also have this one that came out today, which is a pretty good zombie movie called It Stains the Sands Red. I really like this one a lot. It was like a different kind of take on a zombie film. And it was like basically one zombie following this woman through the desert, and he just won't let up. He's like following her everywhere, and she's got no way to kill him. And it's just kind of her, you know, poking around the desert with him kind of coming after him the whole movie. I really like this one. I thought it was definitely a different take. I believe this might have come out today, this Princess Bride, the 30th anniversary edition. I don't know for sure, and I don't know if this is one of those ones where it's just like a reissue or not. You know, it has a new slipcover, you know, a little paper thing in the front or not. But I think that one may have been today. And this one, I, I don't remember seeing this in here, this um, Snoop Dogg movie, Grow House. This might have released today as well. I'm not 100% certain though on that. But other than that though, that seems to be all the main things in here I see today. And there are some things in here that came out here TV show wise. Uh, the complete uh, first season of Taken released today. And that one's $29.99. And then um, this one, which I've heard some decent things about, this one I believe is only released on DVD. This one called Channel Zero, Candle Cove. This one is $19.99. I believe I've heard some decent things about this one. I think this aired on Sci-Fi. Like I said, I believe this one is only released on DVD. Other than that, TV show-wise, though, I don't really see anything else in here too different in here today. These may have released today, these Chicago Fires, but I'm not 100% sure. But I'm pretty certain, though, that Taken, that one was today. And then I know for sure, you know, Channel Zero released. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the major new things in here today. 
So anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video. In there is Kai. Sometimes if you're wondering why I'm talking kind of fast and quick, it's talking over music. Because a lot of times it's playing music in there, so I gotta, I gotta talk over it so it doesn't get picked up, and that, that's why it's a lot of like ramble, ramble, ramble going, going on. But anyway though guys, like I always say, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews, and like I said too, my new update will be up this Saturday as well, and I'll have a review of Chucky, you know, The Cult of Chucky, as well as a number of other titles as well, so definitely be on the lookout for that, you know, this Saturday. Anyway though guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Now stay tuned for the reviews. And the first one I got here from Sony is Starship Troopers Traitor of Mars. This is the second of the animated Starship Troopers films. Uh, the first one though, Casper Van Dien, you know, didn't do the voice in. So this is actually him back voicing his character again. So that was a really cool thing to have him come back for this. They did, um... A other Starship Troopers series as well, which was like an animated series. I think it was from like 2000 or 99, 2000. But I've actually always really liked the Starship Troopers films. The first one, though, of course, is always my favorite. And then the third one as well was actually kind of a fun movie. I don't know. I always sort of liked that one. But this one is basically about Caster Van Dien's character. And he is now training a new group, you know, recruits to kind of, you know, battle the, you know, crazy alien bugs that are, you know, killing everybody. They have to kind of fight them. But now the alien bugs, though, have found their way to actually Mars, which is where, you know, everyone lives. So now he has to go there with these new recruits and try and kind of stop these, you know, uh, evil bugs, these crazy bugs from killing everybody and it's kind of like they're kind of like the only hope because other people have kind of like abandoned them there so they ha kind of have to go and with these new people that don't totally know what they're doing yet because they, they're just sort of in the early training stages and he has to kind of go and stop them like I said this is done in like the motion capture kind of style kind of like the Resident Evil animated films that they did and it's, it's kind of like um sort of like the cutscenes from um you know you know uh, video games that's kind of what the look is to them but it's actually really really done you know well done animation and really cool to see you know Casper Van Dien back you know voicing the, the original character again but it has on here though a whole bunch of different featurettes on here about expanding the universe uh, 20 years and counting as well as continuing the universe as well as you know some featurettes too in the making of this as well as the deleted scenes on here and then uh inside featurette here on the story and the characters but if you guys are a fan though of the Source of Troopers one. Pretty cool one here though. The next one here is from Lions Gate. This is a um, movie that aired on Lifetime originally. And I actually really like this one. This was actually very different for a Lifetime movie because it was kind of the subject matter it was really, really dark. And this is based on a true story. And I feel like this is probably one of, they even had a warning at the beginning. I feel like this is probably one of the darkest sort of subject matters that they've done. This is one called Girl in the Box. And it's basically, though, about this couple, kind of this crazy couple. And they end up, you know, in the beginning of this movie, this one girl is out hitchhiking out in kind of the middle of the desert. And they end up, you know, you know, basically getting her in the car and they kidnap her, take her back to their house. And they kind of like, he's kind of like crazy and he's sort of like torturing this girl and he puts her inside of this like her head inside this weird like box contraption kind of thing and the whole basis of this was this girl was held captive for seven years and it's kind of showing all the stuff that the, this guy and his girlfriend did to her and how they were kind of mind controlling her and kind of making her almost believe that you know she was owned by that they kind of owned her and she had to do what they said or things are gonna happen to her family family and it's kind of all of the terrible things that she goes through and all these problems and it's just a terrible thing it's kind of like you know I don't want to say too much if you guys don't know the whole story behind the whole thing, but it's just a, a really well done character piece. Just, like I said, very different for a Lifetime movie. It had a di very different vibe and like a very, like I said, a dark subject matter. Very dark subject matter. And I don't think they've done too many true stories on like something like this, which is a very interesting story too about all this stuff that this girl went through. But really, really well done one here. Definitely re recommend you guys check this one out. The next one here from Paramount, I want to let you guys know this one is available. This is the 4K edition of Transformers: The Last Night, which is the, you know the latest of the Transformers films. I've only really seen um, 
the first Transformers films, and then I've, you know, Transformers film, but then I've seen, you know, bits and pieces of some of the other ones. I always like, you know, Shia LaBeouf, so, like, the ones that he did, I liked, but I haven't seen them in years and years, you know, now it's, um, Mark Wahlberg has kind of come on and continued on the series, and the thing that's big with the Transformers movies is the big thing that you watch it for is the, the, the insane action scenes, and that's one of these things are really big for is the scenes of the robots fighting, because there are some insane scenes, and, you know, the computer effects and stuff on these are probably some of the top notch of you know what the, of these kind of films this is basically though now about optimus prime though and he's kind of you know basically threatening to destroy the earth to kind of you know because of um sort of him trying to um you know save his people but by go by actually destroying the earth and that's essentially what it is it's kind of hard to explain like i said i have not seen all the other ones so i really don't know the films too well but when it comes to though something in 4k though if you guys have 4k this is one of those kind of films though that looks absolutely amazing it's like this is the kind of film too that's really like a great example to really show off 4k because it's less like especially with all the you know effects in this one and all that kind of stuff really pops in you know in 4k and the big thing i always say too with 4k is the hdr the high dynamic range which is the color palette and the sh and the the level of depth and that kind of thing and really really works well on this film has on there a bunch of different features on here as well as, you know, some featurettes on here, uh, Transformers in the UK, but a bunch of different stuff on here. And then the features, you know, are on the uh, Blu-ray disc here. But I just want to let you guys know that this one is available now. The next two ones here, um, Warner Brothers sent over free copies of these ones to check out. This is a fun series. This is I, Zombie, the complete uh, third season. And I watched the other seasons of this show as well basically though about this girl who is a zombie and works as you know kind of at the morgue and she's like kind of solving cases and stuff and if she kind of like you know eats like a portion of the of the subject you know that they're trying to study the case on she kind of like has their memories and kind of like sort of acts like them and stuff and it's kind of a fun show I, th I believe it airs on um, I think it's on the CW is where the show airs on but it's actually a pretty fun show here it has on here though the 2016 Comic-Con panel as well as deleted scenes on this one but I would definitely recommend you guys check this out if you get and if you guys are a fan of the series too cool that you know this one is now out on DVD there's also a I believe there's a burn on demand blu-ray release of that one as well the next one I, I said Warner Brothers sent over free copies of this one as well to let you guys know about this is the complete seventh season of Shameless, the show with William H. Macy. And it's kind of like a real raunchy type show with him and his family and kind of all the kind of problems he's having with his daughter and all, you know, kind of their problems with their family. And it's kind of just like a real raunchy show with all these kind of problems going on. And he plays like a great kind of like alcoholic type character in this. I always really love William H. Macy. Has on here, though, uh, two featurettes on here um, and then as well as unaired scenes on this. The next one here from, um, uh, this is from VCI. And this is a movie called Ruby. This is the uh, Blu-ray and DVD combo of this one. And this is a movie I had never seen before. I always remember seeing the cover for this one, but had never seen this film. This is basically, though, and it's all set in like a drive-in. The beginning of this movie, you see... Um, this woman's husband gets killed by the mob and it's years later and for some reason she ends up like working with the people that killed her husband the mob and they work at like a drive-in that she runs and like the daughter that you know died like you know there was you know when the, right there was just about to be born right when the husband was killed like that daughter though has got some kind of strange stuff going on she's almost sort of like a carry type with these kind of weird like possessed telekinetic like odd something really odd about this daughter and, it, and right in the um you know this is 16 years later in the drive-in though people that work there like the mobsters and stuff like that are kind of getting killed off and like dying in these sort of strange deaths and like i said it's all set in this drive-in setting with these mobsters getting killed off and it's kind of a wacky kind of mixed genre of all these type of things with sort of like a mobster kind of movie mixed with a exorcist carry type movie mixed it with like a slasher type movie so it's kind of all mixed into one it has on here though a brand new 2k transfer of the, of the film here it has some interviews on here a commentary track on here with the director um uh, as well as a 2017 commentary track so a bunch of different stuff in here as well as like a bonus uh, dvd copy of the movie but a pretty interesting one like i said that i had never seen before the next one here and this is from a company i think it's just from bite-sized films 
um, the Bite Size movie. I'll put a link for where you guys can get this one. It's a documentary. It was a pretty well done documentary. I actually really got into this one. Anything that's about like weight loss and that kind of stuff I always like because if you guys haven't seen my videos, you know, years back and stuff, I used to be really heavy. I used to be over 450 pounds. So like anything that has to do with, you know, weight loss and that kind of stuff I always like. And this is a documentary about these kids that are all like 13 years old around that age about them losing weight. It's about one kid whose father is really concerned about him because he's always playing video games and he's trying to get him to lose weight. One girl who goes to like a school where it's it's like a they kind of control your food and help you lose weight. But when she gets out of this school and goes back home, she has problems with trying to figuring out how to kind of control it and stay on track. And this other kid who is um has anger issues in school he's going out for football and that's kind of trying to help him with his weight and that's that's essentially what it is but it's all just kind of and it's also about this uh, guidance counselor who is trying to help these girls lose weight by having this group about teaching them about foods and the, what's better to eat and stuff it was actually a really interesting one it was one of those ones too I really was interested in watching too you know what happens with the kids and you know how successful they are but I like I said I always like these kind of things about losing weight and the next one here, I'm going to put a link for where you guys can get this one. This is an interesting one. This has this stars the kid from the Halloween remake. And it's a movie called Ditch Party. And it was interesting, too. The one guy from who's on some episodes of Pawn Stars who owns the Toy Shack, he actually has a cameo on this movie. Like I said, it's a movie called Ditch Party. This is actually pretty good, though. It's about the kid, you know, I don't never know how to say his name for sure. It's like Diego Ferch. But he's like... um. It's basically a, he ends up inviting these kids, like send them text messages you know, during school and says, come down to the basement of the school. There's going to be this big party down there. At like It's like it's like 11 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And they all kind of meet up. It's like a group of these kids. And some of the kids are sort of friends. Other ones kind of don't get along with each other, like a whole different cliques and stuff like that of people. And they end up going down there. And of course, though, he ends up having this big plan. He's, you know, brought a gun to school, and it's kind of about a school shooting thing, about kids at school getting killed. And then these kids are kind of, like, um, hear what's going on upstairs and kind of barricade the doors. It's kind of them down there. It's a character piece, though, about them kind of talking to each other and talking about their differences and how they, why they didn't get along with each other, why they're kind of panicking about how they're going to get out of there because they're calling the police, and the police is like, whoa, we can't get into school right now. We don't know where he is. The best thing for you to do is kind of lock yourself down there and hide and just like make sure you're safe. And it's kind of like um, his performance, though, the kid from, you know, Halloween, he was really, really good in this. This is like a it's a sad type movie, too. But I actually thought this was actually pretty well done about, you know, a different kind of take on the whole thing. Like I said, it's all set down in the school basement with them kind of locked down there. But like I said, I want to let you guys know about this one called Ditch Party. The next one here is another interesting documentary from MPI called Meat, um, a, a Story of Sustainable Food. It's a movie from New Zealand. And it's like I said, it's called Meat. And it's basically, it shows you the side of like meat that you don't really see about the farming of the animals for. I'm not somebody who eats a lot of meat myself, so it was like interesting to sort of see all this. And it kind of shows the whole aspect of the farmers, what the farmers go through about like, um, with the chickens and how like you know I kept on thinking like Napoleon Dynamite where they like when Napoleon Dynamite had to like, go in that area with all those chickens there's like an area like that about this guy who's like farming the chickens and then kind of taking care of them and then it talks to like the pigs and like the whole process and stuff um and that, that's essentially what it is. It's kind of showing the aspect of the farmers, what the farmers go through, and how, you know, this is their livelihood and making their money, and kind of like the, the, the way that they kind of handle it. also shows a guy, too, who kind of lives off the land. He kind of lives out in a tent, and he kind of goes and catches his own food and says how he thinks it's important that people kind of know where the food comes from. Definitely an interesting documentary, all on the subject of meat and kind of where it comes from in the aspect of the farmers. Next one's here. Just one that you guys know. These are available from uh, Mill Creek, and this is the complete series of the TV show Friday Night Lights. I can't remember exactly when this show aired. I think it was a couple years back, but it has you know it's a football drama series. It, I remember it was very very popular when it was on, and it's all uh, five series you know five seasons of the show. The complete uh, first season, complete uh, second season, third season fourth season and fifth season i look through these too they look really good on blu-ray there you know it was a show too that was, that was shot you know in hd so definitely benefits you know from blu-ray and i don't know for sure if it was released 
all the seasons released in the past? I can't say for certain if they were. This this is one too, another one that just came out. And this is the complete series of Coach. And I always remember watching this on Nick at Night when they were re-airing this one. And I think I looked at it a little bit too when it was when it was like in it's like one of the later seasons. I just remember watching this as a kid. I can't remember exactly when, but I remember like totally watching this as a kid because I always liked the main actor from this because he was in, you know, Poltergeist. And this is just a really fun show about this guy who is a football coach. And it's kind of like, it's kind of, he's like really big at the school. And then it kind of talks about his family life and his own problems with his kids and the kind of stuff they're going through. Just a really fun early sitcom show here. This is the complete series of the show. And it ran for nine seasons. So I always love these kind of sets, you know, when you get all the episodes together in a big set like this. And they're, they're all in there like season, you know, nine, disc two. So definitely a cool one here if you guys are a fan of this show. And these ones here are um, some new, like, collection sets here. This one is ten action movies. It has ten different action movies in here. The Advocate, Le Legacy, Mall, The New Republic, uh, Night Drive, Nobody Can Be Cool, Lost Dream, Silent Thief. And they're in here, and they're two different discs, so it's like five different movies on the disc. But I actually look through them. The picture quality on these are good, though. They're they're not like compressed or anything, at least as far as I could tell. This other one here has uh, ten horror movies, and this has Bloodline, All Alone, Ashes, All God's Creatures, Billy Col Billy's Cult, uh, Phobia, Summer School, Vanished, Stevie. The Purgitation one is like a new movie. I don't think that had ever been released on anything else before. And this was like a, in the beginning of where these kids were going to film in this old abandoned asylum and something bad had happened to one of the kids. And then it was years later, like the girl who like survived what happened kind of wants to go back there and like see exactly, you know, kind of go back to the whole thing and kind of revisit what had happened to her. And on here too as well in two disc set. Uh, the next one here is from um, Monarch Home Entertainment. This stars the main guy, David Keith. And I, 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 and I always remember him from the movie Firestarter. And like he, I know he's in like tons of stuff, but I always, that's one of those things I always remember him from. And he always kind of reminded me of Patrick Swayze. He kind of looked like Pat, especially in the 80s. He always kind of had a Patrick Swayze kind of look, especially in Firestarter. This is a movie called Heritage Falls. This is basically, though, about him. And he's like a, he's a high school coach who just retired and he was like really popular at the school all the kids really liked him he was kind of but but it, his home life was really different like his own son who's older now he didn't really have a good relationship with his son and he kind of drifted apart and his son and his son's kid is now um looking like he's going to drop out of school and he ends up having this idea of going on this like overnight trip for a couple days out to this cabin where he would usually take the kids on a trip and he has like kind of these officer courses and stuff that they would do with the kids and it's kind of him going out there to try and see his son and then his grandson and sort of try and like kind of help fix up their family because things are kind of starting to fall apart and kind of reconnect again and kind of fix their relationships so it's a fun family drama thing here about them trying to fix all the stuff that's kind of going wrong and kind of reconnect. And the last one here from this company called um, Altered Innocence is a movie called A Closer Walk w With Thee. And this is an interesting one. This is basically about these kind of like missionaries that all kind of live together. They're kind of a, a group of these kids, like in their, I guess like early 20s, and they're all very religious and um, they all kind of live together in this apartment. And the one guy is kind of like the pastor of the church. And he has a, like a relationship with the one you know, other guy who's in there with him. They're kind of friends, but the other one is sort of having feelings for him. And he gets kind of caught spying on him when he's in the shower. And then the one girl like tells what had happened. And it's kind of like um, the priest one who's sort of like the, the, the one who's kind of like the pastor of the church. He ends up like thinking that he's like possessed and going in like trying to exercise the demons from him. And there's all these weird exorcism kind of scenes and they have kind of odd stuff going on. It's definitely an interesting kind of take on the whole kind of like exorcist kind of really religious type people kind of thing. Kind of a little bit done, a little parody-ish as well, but actually pretty well done. I always, I really like the company too, the, the, the stuff they released because they released Desire Was Set Me Free, which is probably one of my favorite movies in a long time. And then that other one I talked about a little while ago called Door... Doors Cut Down, which is like a short film, which is a really good one as well. This one has on here a commentary track on this one. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!
So before we go, let's take a look at the latest BAM box and see what's in here. I'll put a link below if you guys are interested in signing up for the BAM box. The first thing in here is some kind of a shark thing here. It says, um, BAM box, and it's like, this shark has been signed by Tara Reid, who plays April in the Sharknado films. So that's pretty cool, like a shark, you know, she signed the side of the shark thing. That's kind of a cool thing to have her sign. The BAM box, you know, always has, you know, signatures and stuff like that in here. And then they have the McLovin, you know, ID from, um, you know, my McLovin driver's license from, you know, Superbad. That's pretty cool thing to have in there. Another thing in here is some kind of a um, dark matter props. So some kind of like a replica prop thing. Let's see what's in here. Some kind of a medallion type thing here. And let's see, it says it's from the Watcher Wild Hunt Watcher Wolf Medallion. I don't know for sure what that is, is exactly, what, what that was. And here's the character, you know, from uh, Ghostbusters 2. That's a pretty cool one. I'm, the name is totally blanking on me right now. The read the paper thing. I know it, but I'm not thinking right now. Uh, and they also have a Bender pin here. Uh, that's a cool thing. They always have, you know, pins in the box here as well. Let's see what this thing is. Some kind of a print here. And it's, um, let's see, Certificate of Authenticity. Uh, it's a Joker print. Oh, yeah, so it's a Joker. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is, you know, um, the fan art collection. You know, this is uh, Vigo. You know, I don't know why I'm blanking on the name. You know, Vigo, the master of evil. Try to bat on my boys. It's not legal. You know, I, sh I should remember that. This is from... I don't know what this exactly is from. Some kind of a show. Um, and then they have, like, these alternate pins you could get, too. This is a real limited one of Leonard Nimoy. And these are all, you know, Futurama pins. And, then, and they also have a new box, too, that they just started, the horror box, too. So that's pretty cool. And then they have the, the license, and they also have an alternate print here as well uh, for, like, a Batman kind of one here. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, though, guys, just a little look here at the um, BAM box, like I said. Uh, thanks again for always watching these videos, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.